as a pastor and preacher for more than 20 years. If you will ask me, Pastor, what is the hardest part in pastoring a church for more than 20 years? Well, for me, preaching is not the biggest struggle. For me, managing the mechanics of our church is not the biggest struggle. For me, building project, supervising the building project is not the biggest and the most difficult struggle. In pastoring and leading God's people, the biggest struggle is how we could encourage and influence God's people to obey God. How we can take them from point A to point B. Because there are some Christians who are really stubborn. You want to take them from this point to that point, but they are very stubborn. Yung iba naman, they just want to maintain their own mindset. Yung iba, they are afraid to move from point A to point B. I can relate to the struggle of Moses when he tried to lead the nation of Israel from Egypt through the wilderness at upang dalhin sila doon sa pangakong lugar where they will experience the wonderful blessings of the Lord. But it was not easy taking them from Egypt. You know, those people did not even believe him. Some of them even questioned him. Who sent you? They said. And he had to prove to them that he was sent by God. Kung minsan may mga ganyan, na pag pinangaralan namin, klaro naman yung salita ng Diyos, kaya lang kinu-question yung aming credibilidad or authority bilang pastor. You know? And I praise God na sa atin, dito sa HBBC, we have been taught that when it comes to listening and following the pastor, we follow the pastor as the pastor follows Christ. In short, as he leads us to the Lord in following the will of God, sinusunod natin yung pastor. Now, Moses struggled to lead the people throughout the wilderness. They had so many unbelief. Some of them kept telling Moses, Let's go back. It's not worth it. We will die here. They kept thinking about going back. Alam nyo po, I could probably endure all the rest of the challenges in the ministry. Ang pinakamahirap lamang na challenge sa aming mga pastor ay kung papaano namin kayo matulungan, mga kapatid, na sumunod sa Diyos to move from point A to point B from point B to point C. We can spend a lot of hours preparing messages, explaining to you, hey, this is the command of God. This is what God wants for you. This will be a blessing to your family. But when it comes to the reality, ayaw mong humakbang, ayaw mong magbago. To some people, they just want to hold on to their bad habits, to their pet sin. Ang hirap silang tulungang makaalis doon sa kanilang mga pet sin and so on and so forth. Yung iba naman, mga kapatid, they are simply afraid. I hope that today, I could be able to help you by first of all, identifying the common areas or where we're in believers usually struggle to obey and submit to God. That's the title of our message today. The 10 areas where believers usually struggle to submit and obey. Having been a pastor for more than 20 years, having observed my dad pastor our church and preach to us and lead us and discipline people and, you know, just talk to people, I have come to realize, and as I read the Bible, ito po yung mga top 10. There are other areas more, but... These are, I believe, the top 10 areas where believers find it difficult to be, where we pastors find it difficult to help believers and Christians obey God. I hope makatulong po sa inyo ngayong umaga. Now let me begin with James chapter 1 
verse number 22. The Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Alam nyo po, wag nyong sayangin. Yung kada Sunday ka makinig, kada Wednesday, ang gagandang preaching, wala ka namang ginagawa. The real joy and blessing when it comes to your relationship with the Word of God is not only hearing, that's the initial, but it's actually in the doing. It's in the obeying. Tingnan nyo po ang John chapter 13 verse number 17. John chapter 13 verse number 17 where it says, If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Nakita nyo yan? Kung alam nyo ito, masaya kayo pag ginawa nyo. Hindi sinabi na masaya kayo pag nalaman nyo to. Yung iba pag may nalaman, tuwang tuwa. Eh hindi wala naman siyang gagawin. Yung iba pag na-enlighten yung o oh, ganun pala yun? Oh wow, grabeng galing. Na-enlighten ako. Pero pag uwi sa bahay, ganun pa rin. Wala namang gagawin mga kapatid. Ang totoong kagalakan sa salita ng Diyos mga kapatid ay nagkukulminate doon sa ating pagsunod. Of course, nagsisimula sa pag-alam. Nagpapatuloy sa pag-uunawa. We call it meditate. But it culminates actually, it becomes very uh, uh, productive. It is consummated doon sa ating pagsunod. So let's talk today about obeying God. What are these 10 areas? Para sa akin as a pastor, these are the top 10 areas that believers usually struggle to submit and obey God. Alam niyo itong unang punto, mga kapatid, na aking ibabahagi sa inyo, ito yung isa sa mga pinakamahirap na tulungan ang mga believers na sumunod sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Let me illustrate it this way before I give to you the point. God has a development plan. Parang, alam niyo po, if you can picture in your mind ano, a developing city na kung saan kinakailangan niyang gumawa ng road system, okay? Kinakailangan niyang gumawa ng mga piping, ng mga electrical, i-prepare ang development, uh, development plan ng syudad. So in building that highway, he had to purchase these properties, you know, buy those houses. Those people would have to live or would be probably transferred to another area. Pero may mga tao na they are simply stubborn. You know? They don't want to move away. They want to stay there. Kaya yung city, nahihirapan ngayon na i-work out yung kanyang development plan. I want you to look at it that way na kung minsan, mayroong mga kristyano, may mga members, may mga believers na gagabayan natin yan sa pagbabago. Alam mo kapatid, ito ang plano ng Diyos sa'yo na maging ganito ka, kaya kinakailangang mabago ito, maalis ito, you have to take off this old habit, itong bisyo mo, kailangan mabago yan, kailangan mapalitan yung attitude mo, masyado kang mayabang, masyado kang ganito, ganyan-ganyan. E sometimes, we are very stubborn, we simply do not want to change, we simply do not want to submit and yield. Kaya mga kapatid, na dead delay yung progress ng ating Christian life. You know? So the first aspect, which I believe one of the top 10 areas believers usually struggle to submit and obey is yielding to God's transforming work. Yielding to God's transforming work. Itong transforming mga kapatid is not for the bad but for the good. Yung pong illustration na development plan. Diba? Imagine nyo yan. Development plan it speaks of progress. It speaks of blessing mga kapatid. There are areas in your life where God desires to bring change. Okay? It could be in your mind, in your heart. It could be habits, vices. Alam mo yan, even as I speak this right now, alam ko na ginagamit ito ng Panginoon 
upang i-convict ka, you can see it yourself, pwede kang magsalimin dito, and God, the Holy Spirit, is convicting you what aspect of your life God wants to change. Sometimes, it's in the area of attire. Ang dami natin mga members na pinangaralan na, pinaliwanagan na, you know, lumalaban, nagja-justify. Minsan, susunod, pagdating sa labas, inconsistent. Mga kapatid, apakahirap na talagang tulungan kung minsan ang mga Kristiyano na magbago ng kanilang mga maling pamumuhay, maling mentalidad at maling mga bisyo sa kanilang buhay. We struggle to surrender. We still hold on to old habits. Talagang nakahawak ka doon sa petsin mo. Sometimes we just want to stay in our comfort zone. Ayaw natin. Di ba? Oh, we would like we don't want to embrace his will. At sabi ng Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6, sabi rito, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mga kapatid, unless you are willing na sumunod sa pagbabago na gusto ng Diyos at hindi at ikaw ay makipag-cooperate sa kanya mga kapatid, unless you do that, hanga umunsad ti Christian life mo. Kaya maraming mga Kristiyano ang stagnant. Kayo mga members na matatagal na, alam nyo kung yung Christian life you ay stagnant ngayon. One of the reasons why your Christian life is stagnant is because there are areas in your life that God wants to change but you are resisting God. You're just ignoring God. You are just telling yourself, well, anyway, I go to church, I can still worship God, you know, and do this kind of thing in my life. Kaya maraming Kristiyano is stagnant. And as a result, maraming Kristiyano, they lack fulfillment and peace. Wala po silang sense na masaya sa sila sa kanilang Christian life. Pagdating sa makamundong bagay, masaya. Pagdating sa mga worldly na mga kaibigan, masaya. Pero yung kanilang Christian life, mga kapatid, wala. They come to church very dry, pinipilit lang maging masaya, pinipilit lang na i-convince ang sarili na, hey, I'm okay. You feel okay, but God is not okay with you. You're just trying to navigate your life on your own. Kasi nga, nire-refuse mo na yung development plan ng Diyos. So, nagumagawa ka ng sarili mo. And you are navigating your life on your own apart from God's direction. And I'm telling you, before not long from now, it will result to confusion. Mag-confuse ka sa sarili mo. Maguguluhan ka sa buhay mo. Dadalhin ka sa anxiety. And it will also end up to a sense of emptiness. Hindi yan. Mga kapatid, ang sinabi ng Jeremiah, na sabi niya ganyan, I know the thoughts that I have toward you, thoughts of peace to give you a wonderful end, expected end, sabi ng Panginoon. Ayaw ng Panginoon ng end mo. Emptiness, anxiety, and confusion. But why? Because you do not follow God. You are not willing to submit to God's development plan. As a result, you are missing the blessing of God upon your life. Pero alam nyo, ang totoong deal dito, ito yon pakinggan nyo maigi. Ha? Ang totoong deal dito, mga kapatid, ay ito. The most important concern is, parang binibigo natin ang Diyos. Di ba? Meron siyang gustong gawin, pero hindi natin siya pinagbibigyan. Tinatanggihan natin siya. Imagine mo yan. He wants to accomplish good in your life, but you're not yielding to Him. You know what you're doing? Ha? Tinatanggihan mo siya, binigbigo mo siya, samantalang napakabuti niya sa'yo, niligtas ka, binigyan ka ng magandang trabaho mo, nagpipray ka, sinasagot niya ang panalangin mo. Tapos ngayon, he wants to initiate a transformation and change in your life. Gusto niyang alisin ang mga bagay na ito. But you are like telling God, Lord, wala kang pakialam dito ha. Okay lang tayo paglinggo, magkita tayo sa church pag Sunday, God, ha? Pero pag lunes, wala kang pakialam sa gagawin ko, ha? Wala kang pakialam sa mga lugar na pupuntahan ko, ha? Parang ganon. 
Kaya nga, pag nagpe-preach na kami, it's either nagigilty ka o kuminsan, mas lalong tumitigas pa yung puso mo. Kaya may mga members na nagagalit sa pastor. Alam mo, pag nagagalit ka sa pastor at uh, nagre-resist ka doon sa mga binibigay namin na instruction ng Panginoon, you know what you are telling? Parang sinasabi mo sa Diyos, Oh God, wag mo akong pakialaman sa bagay na ito. Oh, anyway, nakita na tayo ng Sunday, Lord. Ha? Pumunta mo nga pa nga ako ng prayer meeting sa church. Ha? Doon na tayo nagkita. Pero yung lunes, yung gusto kong gawin, Ops, Lord, wala kang pakialam dyan. Ha? Yung mga lugar na gusto kong puntahan, kung sino mga gusto. Sabi na pa, ah, hindi anak, hindi, hindi, hindi. Babaguhin ko lahat yan. Lord, wala kang pakialam, Lord. Can you imagine? Ganyan ang drama ng buhay mo, kapatid. Ganyan ang senaryo ng buhay mo. Hindi nakakatuwa sa harapan ng Diyos. You know what? You are you are just disappointing God. Samantalang napakabuti niya sa iyo. Dapat ikaw yung Kristiyano na Lord. Nakaka-guilty naman. You are so good to me. What shall I render unto the Lord for his benefits? Pag sinabi sana ng Panginoon, eto anak ka, baguhin natin. Okay, Lord. Eto anak ka, iwasan mo na yung mga friends na yan. Hindi magandang influence sa iyo. Ang sabi ng Bible, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, Lord. Putulin mo yan. Okay, Lord. Cut this thing off. Yes, Lord. Pero minsan, we are so stubborn, mga kapatid. Are you that Christian today? Pagkitanong mo ngayong katabi mo, ikaw ba yung tinutukoy ni Pastor? Ha? Come on, ask your seatmate. Ikaw ba yung tinutukoy niya? Masyado kang stubborn. Ayaw mong magbago. You see that? That is why many are stagnant. There is no sense of fulfillment. They come to church, but they don't feel the joy of coming to the church. You know? They are missing the plan of God upon their life. And uh, sometimes God is so loving and so good na minsan pag ganun tayo, He would initiate chastening. Chasten ka ng Panginoon. That's the truth of the matter. Kaya ang dapat mong gawin ngayon, pag na-realize mo na, Lord, pambihira, uh, I have been unyielding to you. I have been resisting you. I tell you what, wag mo nang antayin na ang Panginoon ay mag-initiate ng chastening sa iyo para lang mag-humble at mag-submit ka sa Kanya. If you don't want God to humble you, you humble yourself now. Huwag mong ayan, ito pang isa mga kapatid, huwag mong pahayaan na mangyari na yung mali mo na yan, mas lalong lumalalim ka. Every time you're resisting God, Palalim ng palalim ka dyan hanggang sa ang hirap mo nang makaahon. Yan yung mga kristyano na kahit anong preaching na, kahit anong paalala mo, kahit bisitahin mo, wala na ang hirap mga kapatid kasi lumalim siya ng lumalim. Pero alam mo kahit papaano by the grace of God, may chance ka eh na pwedeng baguhin ng Panginoon. I pray mga kapatid na lahat tayo sa HBBC Ah, whatever area in your life God is trying to change right now ah, But you are very stubborn You are resisting it I pray na uuwi ka sabihin mo Lord God Hindi man nabanggit ni Pastor Kung ano yung specific Pero alam ko you dealt with me Itong attitude na to Mali talaga Lord Itong bagay na to I'm resisting every time Lord God Patawarin po ninyo ako Amen So that's the first area where I find some believers difficult to help, to obey God. Pangalawa mga kapatid, I mentioned this last time. The second area where many believers usually, now observe ko one of the top 10 where believers usually struggle to obey God. Ay ito po, coming together for worship and prayer. Yan po yung araw ng ating pagsamba which is Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, and Wednesday night. Now, sa mga bago, because of, you know, the many necessities of life, napakahirap na i-priority. But I praise God na may mga believers, mga kapatid, na talagang makita mo yung lakas ng pananampalataya na nung tinuruan mo na magsamba sa araw ng linggo, at dumalo na makisama sa mga prayer time, mga kapatid. Ay hindi na siya nagdalawang isip. Kundi sabi niya, well, if this is God's will for me, I am going to obey and I'm going to attend our church services consistently. 
Ang utos po ay nakalagay dito sa Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 24. Ang sabi dito, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. This is where many Christians struggle, even all Christians. Let me ask you today, are you struggling in obeying this area of your life? Kumusta ang pag mo ng Sunday morning and Wednesday night? That's the second area. Well, anyway, I'm not going to dwell any longer on this point. Ano? Sabagkat ito yung tinutukan ko last time. But just to remind you, I praise God that there were some brethren who messaged me after listening to this and said, Pastor, thank you for that preaching. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you for that encouragement. For whatever be the reasons, mga kapatid, na nahihirapan na tayong makarating sa pagsamba at panalangin, huwag po niyong hayaan na mapagtagumpayan kayo ng mga reasons where it be personal or other reasons may be. May you always successfully obey God every week and meet with God at our services. Amen ba mga kapatid? Okay. Now, the third top 10, the third on the top 10 areas where believers usually struggle to obey. Ito po. Alam nyo, ito yung isa sa mga sabi nga nung araw eh, parang yung ano daw, parang yung kabayo. ba? Pagka, nung ano approsam tilikod na, gusto na. Ha? Jay Bagina, gusto na. O, oh, ngam no DJ, silang nakakabsat, kugtaran na ka. Why? Because there are many believers, when you talk about prayer, oh, I like that, it's comforting. When you talk about the love of God, I like that. It's very encouraging. When you talk about hope, oh, I like that message. It's really empowering. But when you talk about giving, ayan na mga kapatid, parang kabayo, kugtaran na ka, unukusayan na ka. The third area where believers usually struggle to obey is in the area of generosity. And cheerful giving Generosity and cheerful giving Ito hindi lang struggle Ng mga bago But you know what Even those who have been there They are struggling Who among of you don't, You don't need to raise your hand But who among of you Are now struggling In the area of giving Let me first give to you The mandate of God About this matter In Proverbs chapter 3 Verse number 9 Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 9. In fact, memorize na ng iba sa atin ito. Ano po? Sabi ng Bible, Honor the Lord. We are commanded to honor the Lord. Are you honoring God? Many of us honor God with our lips, but our heart is far from Him. Let us prove the way we honor God, not only by our lips, but by our generosity. Because it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Nakalagay din po dito sa Luke chapter 6 verse number 38. Luke chapter 6 verse number 38. This is the mandate of God to us. He said, Give. Hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, please give. Hindi po nagmamakaawa ang Diyos sa iyo, kapatid. Aha? Hindi siya nagmamakaawa. He is commanding you to give. Why? He deserves that. Okay? He deserves that. So he's saying, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with that, it shall be measured to you again. Very clear. The mandate is 
Honor the Lord with thy what? Everybody, with thy? Okay, ask your seatmate. Do you have substance? Okay? And then what is the next command? Give. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7, ganito po ang sabi ng Bible. Sabi dito, Every man, this is the command, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, hindi mabigat sa kalooban, nor of necessity, hindi dahil kailangang magbigay, because God loveth, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, the third area where God wants us to obey Him is in the area of generosity and cheerful giving. Now, in this aspect, okay, I would like to present to you the three reasons why we struggle to give. I know I am aware that we have new believers right now who are still trying to take a baby step in their giving. And I'm also aware that we have members, so I am praying for you. And I am trying to help you become faithful in obeying God in this area. But you don't simply obey God. Okay? Makinig kayong maigi. Three reasons why we struggle to give. The first reason why we struggle to give is the fear of financial insecurity. Natatakot tayo mga kapatid. Many individuals worry, nag, nag, natatakot, nangangamba about their own financial stability. Para bagang iniisip mo, kulang na nga para sa amin. Magbibigay pa ako Paano na lang yung mga pangangailangan namin? Paano na lang yung mga utang ko? Paano yung mga amortization ko? Paano yung mga bills ko? Paano yung lahat ng mga ito? Hindi nga sapat eh. Magbibigay pa ako? E di wala na. That's the fear of financial insecurity. We fear that if we give generously, we won't have enough for our own needs. Mga kapatid, gusto ko kayong tanungin ngayon, yan ba ang isyo ng buhay mo? Kaya hindi ka makapagbigay dahil iniisip mo, kulang na nga, mababawasan pa. Paano na lang? How will this left tong natira dito? E magkakasya sa akin. Mga kapatid, alam mo, ang isyo dito, hindi talaga interest ng Panginoon. Na, na, the God's interest is not on the money that you will give. God's interest is to teach you faith and trust in Him. Every now and then, time and again, makita mo sa Bible, mga kapatid, how God uses the program of generosity and cheerful giving not because God wants the money of the people, but because He wants to teach the people faith. He's not raising fun. He is raising faith. Now, as an example, mga kapatid, di ba? Again and again, napagaganda ito. Alam niyo yung example sa Bible tungkol kay Elijah na naubos na yung tubig ng brook cherries kung saan siya umiinom ng tubig. And the birds stop coming to send or to bring food for him. And God told him, Arise and get thee to Zarephath. Dumako karon, And there is a widow woman to feed thee there. Can you imagine? Ang magpapakain sa kanya, nangangailangan, mga kapatid. Widow woman. So anyway, Elijah obeyed and walked how many miles just to reach to the widow of Zarephath. Pagdating po niya sa Zarephath, nakita niya yung widow. And then, he approached the widow and immediately he said, feed me. Get a water for me. Yun po lang una. Bigyan mo ko ng tubig. Tapos maya maya, habang papun sabi ka niya, pakainin mo ako. ba? Ngayon, sumagot itong widow. Sabi niya, sir, ito na, insecu financial insecurity. Ha? Sabi niya, sir, Etong pagkain ito, ah, 
Kaya na kami kumukuha ng mga kahoy kasi magluluto kami at ang lulutuin namin pagkain, sir, last meal na po namin ito. Okay? Ito na yung parang, parang ano ito, ito yung pagkain bago kami mamatay. Pagkatapos to, wala na kami pagkain, aantay na lang namin ang kamatay. Bakit po? Eh bakit? Be because there was famine in the land. There was economic downturn. There was financial instability. You know, walang tumutubong mga halaman eh. Wala nang mga fruit bearing. Wala na yung mga palay at lahat. There was famine. And sometimes that happens to us. Ang hirap ng buhay at lahat-lahat. And we, we are commanded to give. Hindi ba alam ng Diyos na walang-wala na tayo? Hindi ba alam ng Diyos na kulang? Sasabihin niya pa, give. Mga kapatid, this is an issue of faith right now. Kaya nga, sinabi niya, sabi ng widow, sir, wala na po talaga. Pero sabi niya, hayaan niyo, papakainin ko kayo. To cut the story short, you can read the account in the book of First Kings para mas mainam, basahin niyo pag uwi po ninyo. Ha? Pinagluto po niya ha? yung prophet. E pinagluto niya yung prophet, mga kapatid. And to cut the story short, sabi ng Bible, Pagkatapos yan, kumain yung prophet. And after that, the Bible says that yung pong pagkain noong widow ay hindi po naubos. It did not run out. In other words, God used the widow to provide an example, a story, an example to show to us, mga kapatid, God's intent in commanding us to give. Not only because to provide for the need of that man of God, Elijah, but not only because God wanted to bless the woman, but God wanted to show that, hey, you need to trust God, you need to have faith in Him. Kaya kung sa oras na ito, ikaw ay nasa ganitong kalagayan na ang hirap na nga ng buhay, ang daming pagkagastusan, ang daming bayarin, nagbabayad pa ako ng amortization, nagsasakyan ko, bill ko, tapos magbibigay pa ako, Wow, mga kapatid, I pray that you learn to exercise your faith right now. Amen? I do not know kung sino po sa inyo ang natulungan ng puntong ito, but I hope that this point was a blessing to you. Secondly, mga kapatid, ang pangalawang reason why many believers struggle to give is cultural influence. Pag sinabing cultural influence, trend nasasama tayo, nadadala tayo ng trend. Because society often promotes self-sufficiency. And materialism, by this and by that, if you don't have this na naudighan, you know, leading people to prioritize wealth and possession and material thing over generosity. Now, let me clear this thing up. Wala namang pong masama na magkaroon tayo ng mga bagay na ito pero dapat una sa lahat na ibigay natin yung dapat para sa Panginoon. At wala rin masama na magkaroon tayo ng mga bagay na ganyan. Ang masama, grabe yung pagbili mo ng mga bagay pero ganito lang yung giving mo sa Panginoon. This issue is an issue of love. Kung yung kanina mga kapatid ang inaadresan natin ay yung pananampalataya at pagtiwala sa Diyos. Dito naman ay yung pag-ibig. Ano ang mas mahal mo? Ha? When God requires something from you, would you rather prioritize the things that you want to buy? At kahit pang tights mo na, bibilhin mo yan, gagastusin mo yan, yung pang purse mo, gagastusin mo yan. Hindi dapat, mga kapatid. Let me ask you today, do you really love God? Do you love God? Mahal mo ba ang Diyos? Ha? Then now you prove the sincerity of your love. God loved us. He gave His Son. It was not difficult for Him because He loved us. Ganon din ho dapat sa atin. As we respond in love to God, let us give. Cultural influence. Ikaw ba yan ngayon? Tanungin mo yung katabi mo. Ikaw ba yan? Bili ng bili? Ha? Oh, pasyapi ka pa palasada ka palagi ano pa uh, kung may bagong iPhone bili ka na naman pero kung titignan yung giving mo zero tanong mo yung katabi mo ikaw ba yun Brad 
Uh, ikaw ba yung sister? Mga kapatid, walang masama na magkaroon tayo niyan. Ang masama, yung pag-ibig natin, wala na sa Diyos. Nandun na sa mga bagay-bagay. Oh, listen to me. I warn you. Ha? Pag ang Diyos ang naningil sa iyo, mga kapatid, mahihirapan kang magbayad. Don't wait God to collect ha? what is due to Him. Well, of course, hindi ko sinasabi na magbigay ka dahil natatakot ka. Pero ang punto rito, mga kapatid, is learn to exercise your love to God. Amen? Okay, pangatlo. The third reason why many Christians struggle to give is the hard work mentality. Ano itong hard work mentality? Ito po yung belief na, Teka, pinagtrabahuhan ko ito. I work hard for this. Why should I give it away? We may feel a strong sense of ownership. Akin to eh. Pinagpaguran ko to eh. Pinagtrabahuhan ko to eh. Muntik nga akong magkasakit. Yung iba, muntik nga akong mamatay eh. Ha? We feel a strong sense of ownership over our earnings and achievements leading to reluctance in sharing, mga kapatid, what we have as the result of our own efforts. What we perceive as the result. Ang issue dito, mga kapatid, ha? Na dapat maunawaan mo yung principle of stewardship. Na anong ibig sabihin ng stewardship? Ganito yan. God owns everything. Your life. Actually, sa trabaho mo, wag mong sabihin na, God, partner kita sa business ko. I would like to correct that. God is not your partner in your business. He owns you and He owns that business. You are simply His steward. Itatak nyo yan. Kayong mga may negosyo, Kayong may mga trabaho. God is not your partner. He is the owner. We are His stewards. He provides everything we need. Wisdom, physical health, blessings, open door. People that we need to get to know. Lahat po yan, ibinigay sa atin. Pagkatapos hindi natin siya i-honor as the owner, of whatever we have. Okay. Meron pong tatlong mentality na gusto kong ilahad sa inyo. Una, itong mentality na ito. What is mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. Ito yun. Pinagtrabahuhan ko to. Pinaghirapan ko to. Ah, hindi ko ibibigay. Akin lang ito. Yan yun. Hindi niya nauunawaan na God owns him and he is just a steward. Pwede bang sabihin natin ngayon yan? I am a steward. Everybody go. I am God's steward. Go. Very good. Pangalawa, what is yours is mine and I will take it. Ito po yung greedy. Ito yung kobetos na ah, yung mga nasa iyo, pera mo, akin yan. Aangkinin ko yan. Tanungin mo yung katabi mo, ikaw ba yun? You are kobetos and greedy. Talagay ko, wala namang ganong member ng HBBC. Amen po ba? Yung number one siguro meron. Kaya mahirap niyang i-release kasi feeling niya, ah, sa kanya yun. Pinagtrabuhan niya, pinaghirapan niya. What is mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. Number three, ito yung pangatlo. What is mine, yung nasa akin, is the Lord's. And I'm willing to give it. Okay? Yan yung steward's mindset. Mga kapatid, listen. I hope, kada kayo nga members ka nabaybayag, aglalod tabakara, I hope nga dapagdalanan na kada kayo. Na kayo nga naunay faithful to giving kakabsat. Barang adapela pagdalanan na kada kayo digiti nga preaching. Sana hindi ikaw yung number one. Akin to, pinagtrabuhan ko to, pinagirapan ko to, nagsakripisyo. Mundi ako mabatay, mundi ako mabangga, mundi ako madisgrasya dito. Akin lang ito. I will keep it. No, I hope you're not that kind of person. I hope you're that kind of Christian who realizes what is mine is the Lord's. I'm simply God's steward. I'm willing to give it. As I conclude, generosity and cheerful giving are not just about money. They reflect the condition of our hearts and our relationship with God. The struggles we face, huh? the fear of financial insecurity, okay? 
the cultural influences na kung saan ayaw nating pahuli at patalo sa mundo, sa mga bar kabarkada natin, kaibigan natin, kaya sige, the hard work mentality, they are all rooted to fundamental issues of what? It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of love. Nakakalungkot mga kapatid na after all that God has done for you, hindi ka marunong magsukli ng pag-ibig sa Kanya. You know? Sabi ko nga kung minsan, Lord, pambihira, ano? Buti na lang hindi ka tao kasi kung nature ng taong nasa'yo, pambihira. Naikisap kam ka ta amin ng Lord. Wala lang natira sa amin. Di ba? Napaka-merciful pa rin ng Diyos. And it is also an issue of stewardship. We must recognize that our generosity, yung ating pagbibigay, is actually a declaration of our trust in God. Yung bang alam mong kahit hindi sapat, kulang, marami kang paggagastusan, tapos magbibigay ka, you are declaring and saying, God, I know I have many needs, but I trust in you and I claim Philippians 4.19 that you will supply all my need. Will you take that step of faith? That when we choose to embrace that mindset na what is mine is the Lord's, stewards, I am willing to give it. Do you know when you do that? Every time you give what belongs to the Lord, you are breaking free. Ha? Binabasag mo, pinuputol mo, the chains of fear and selfishness and covetousness and materialism in your life. Listen to me. You have no idea how much God can actually bless your life. You can never outgive God. God is not after just after your money. He's after our faith, our love, and faithful stewardship. Kaya mga kapatid, I pray that you go home and you will reject the mentalities that's keeping you from experiencing the joy of giving. Don't be a slave of selfishness. Don't be a slave of materialism. And don't be a slave of poverty mentality. Be a cheerful and joyful, generous giver. Alisin natin ang lahat ng mga wrong mentalities. Mga kapatid, I hope this message has been a great, great blessing to you. I'm telling you what, I've been a pastor for more than 20 years. Pero again and again and again. These are the top 10. Tatlo pa lang yung binigay ko sa inyo. But the top 3 areas of, of the top 10 where believers struggle to obey. Are you struggling to obey God? Are you struggle ka ba dun sa pagbabago? Iniisip mo anong masasabi ng tao sa sa'yo? Why don't you think about God? Why don't you please God? You know, He has done so much for you. Doon ka lang mag-isip. Number 2, dun sa pag attend ng church. I mean, hindi dapat nagmamakao ang pastor, hindi ang Diyos ang gawin. Please come to... No, walang ganun ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. Alam nating obligasyon natin yan. The problem are the hindrances in our life. Our, yung bang napagod na tayo, for example, I pray that today you would be able to overcome all of those bad reasons and go to church regularly and consistently. And how about in the area of giving?